In this video, we'll derive the equation of motion for the simple pendulum, and we'll do it using two different methods. The first is Newton's second law, and the second will be using Lagrange's equations, which is an energy principle. Um, so using Newton's second law, we need to do F equals MA, or rather the moment equals J theta dot, about the point zero, or point O. So um, let me write first the parallel axis theorem. And what that tells us is that if we want to move the moment of inertia from the center of gravity of the pendulum to some arbitrary point, the formula is that j about point zero is j about the center of gravity plus m times l squared. In this case, we're going to assume that the pendulum is a point mass, which means j about its own center of gravity is zero. The, ma the mass itself has no rotatory uh, inertia. So moving forward, j0 theta double dot is equal to the sum of the moments. Well, to figure out the moments, let's have a look at the forces on the mass. The only force acting on the mass is the gravity, well, the gravity in addition to the tension force here in the, in the rod. Uh, gravity is mg. And we can split that into a component that is in the radial direction and another component that is tangent. It's the tangent component that we want to look at. Let me draw this down here a little bit bigger. So it looks something like this, where this is mg down. This is the angle theta. Right? This is the same angle theta. And then the force tangential um, to the mass would be mg times sine theta. <clears throat> so what is the moment? It's the force times the moment arm, which is mg times sine of theta times L. But j0 is ml squared, so we can rewrite this as ml squared theta double dot. Excuse me, that should be a negative sign because it's in the negative theta direction at the moment. So ML theta double dot plus MG sine theta times L is equal to zero. Let me change colors for this. We can cancel the mass. We can cancel the length with one of the lengths there. And rewriting this gives us theta double dot plus g divided by L sine of theta is equal to zero. That's it. Just that simple. Now, while we can write it very simply using Newton's law, uh, when we get into more complicated problems, we'll find that the Lagrange equation method is actually a little bit easier. So I'm going to do it this way as well. Um, what this requires is for us to find both the kinetic and potential energy of the system. The kinetic energy of the system is very easy to write. It's that T, the kinetic energy, is one-half times J naught times theta dot squared, which, as we know, can be rewritten as one-half times ML squared theta dot squared. The potential energy we'll call V. And that is equal to mg times h, where h is the initial height of the bob. Um, let's see if I can draw this here. Okay, we know that this length here is L cosine of theta. That's the projection of L onto there. And since the total length is L, we know that the height, which is the difference, is L, um, let me write it this way first, L minus L cosine, oh, what did I do here, try it one more time, L cosine of theta, which can be written as L into 1 minus cosine of theta. So the potential energy is just mg uh, L1 minus cosine of theta. 
me just erase this mess I'm making here. All right, so substituting it into Lagrange's equations, which I've written at the top, we got to take the derivative of t with respect to q dot, or l, but only t is dependent on uh, the velocity. So this gives us m l squared. The twos cancel. We get a theta dot, and the time derivative of that is a double dot. And then the derivative of v gives us minus m g l. Uh, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of cosine of theta is minus sine of theta. Again, we can cancel the m and the l. And rewriting this, we get theta double dot plus g over l sine of theta is equal to zero. This is a nonlinear equation. Um, we'd solve it numerically and we'll save that for a later video. But we can linearize this for small displacements or small angles theta. Um, let me go ahead and show you how we do that. Okay, so if theta is small, And by that, we mean theta is less than or equal to about 10 degrees. Then we can say that sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. Okay, and if we rewrite the equation of motion, we can write it as theta double dot plus, I'm going to write it as omega squared theta is equal to zero where omega squared is equal to g over l. Now we've seen this equation in the simple harmonic oscillator. I'm just going to write it here to keep it separate. But uh, for the simple harmonic oscillator, which was the mass spring system, this guy, we found that um, x double dot plus omega squared x was equal to zero, where in this case omega squared was k over m. And we know that the solution to that was that x of t was equal to c1 cosine omega t plus c2 sine omega t. So we can do exactly the same thing here. We should assume from that that the solution is that theta of t is equal to c1 cosine omega t plus c2 sine of omega t. And again, omega in this case is root g over l. It comes from taking the square root of that. Okay. What are the initial conditions? Well, generally in the case of a pendulum, what we do is we raise it to some angle theta, and then we let it go. So we'd say that theta initial, theta of zero, is theta sub zero. And we'll say that the velocity is generally zero. Theta dot of zero is equal to zero. If we substitute this into the solution, we find that C1 is equal to theta zero, and that c2 is equal to zero. Okay, so we can rewrite the solution as theta of t is equal to theta zero times cosine of omega t, and I'll remind you that omega is equal to the square root of g divided by l. And there we have it. That's your solution. Uh, one interesting thing to note, I'll just do it on the side here, is that we know that omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, omega being the angular frequency, and that is the square root of g over l. 
this implies that the frequency is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi. times g over L. We also know that the period of vibration is just the inverse of the frequency. We'll call the period of vibration T is 1 over F. Let me write that, period. So therefore we can write the period T as 2 pi times the square root of L divided by G. And so the interesting thing about that is the period, in other words, the time taken for each oscillation, depends only on gravity, which doesn't change, and the length of the string. Um, it doesn't depend on the mass, so it doesn't matter how heavy or how light the bob is, it will still oscillate, at the, take the same time to complete each oscillation. And for the linear problem, meaning small angles of theta, it doesn't matter what the initial angle is. Whether you displace it 5 degrees or 10 degrees initially, it will still take the same time to complete each, each oscillation. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you found something useful in it. If you have, please leave us a comment below or give it a thumbs up, and that way others can get to watch it. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch up with you in the next video.